Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Coco coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. Today I'm going to share with you guys Heimer via Control. Uh, this is one of the most cookie cutter control decks in Runeterra at the moment. Pretty heavy in the meta game, and the card itself, Heimerdinger, will be shaping the meta for a long time to come because this card is actually insane. The ability to just out control any control deck and generate a ridiculous amount of value makes it hard for any other control deck to really go toe to toe with the immense uh, creation of value Heimerdinger can bring. So let's jump across, have a look at the deck, talk about the cards and why they're here and what they shall be doing. But before we do that, I just want to add, um, if you guys have Twitter, feel free to follow me. I do post updates there. If anything changes to the schedule or just random nonsense, you might want to hear about it. Feel free to come follow me on Twitter. It'll be in the description below. Thanks guys. So I guess the first card we need to talk about is Heimerdinger for the newer players at least who don't know what Heimerdinger does. He's essentially a card that while he's on the field, every spell you play you're going to get a corresponding turret equal to the value of that card and it's going to be zero mana and fleeting which is actually insane. One of the most common things you're going to see when you face this deck by the way is the fact that if you abuse three mana spells alongside Heimerdinger, you're going to often see these uh, three mana 3-1 elusive units that can be quite annoying for decks to deal with. Pretty much to sum up this deck, if Heimerdinger gets onto the field unchecked and you get a couple of spells off, you will just pretty much go to town on value and then this immense pressure. They have to like choose what to deal with. They can deal with the Heimerdinger, sure, but you have a chance of bursting out some cheap spells before it happens to at least guarantee some value from it. And hopefully we draw into the next Heimerdinger. Now this deck does come with weaknesses. This list in particular is super susceptible to burn aggro, but that's kind of unfortunate. And hopefully your opponent draws bad when we burst them. Outside of that, you are pretty strong against a lot of the meta. Um, you can draw kind of averagely and maybe get kind of outpaced by Karma Ezreal. But outside of that, the value that you're bringing with Heimerdinger is actually ridiculous and this deck is insane. I think Heimerdinger is a card that I wouldn't be surprised to see get touched in the patches. So be careful when considering crafting decks at the moment. I don't think the patch is too far away. They come in a monthly cycle. So at least wait till maybe this patch is over or this patch begins and then we can figure out what to build next. But for now, Heimerdinger is insane. All to talk about it. the rest of the cards in the deck, okay? So recent additions to this deck will include Vi for any players that are kind of a bit more veteran like. We've got Claws of the Dragon and we've also got Vi. Vi, I think it's just really just a crazy card. It fits into Heimerdinger as well because we do spam out a lot of spells and it's not hard for us to level up Vi at all. Vi is just crazy. I think I've said this in previous videos, but it's just a very heavy utility card that can slot into a lot of decks as a mid-range threat. So there's not much to say about Vi. If you don't have Vi, you can run this deck without it. You'll be at a disadvantage in the mirror, but you can definitely replace it with some cards. Feel free to leave a comment if you're interested to know what the replacements are. Because unless I think of them during the video, I'll let you know. Vi is just crazy, especially if it's super well into Heimerdinger because we do spam out those fleeting units. I will have only as a three of. This is a pretty staple card in the metagame. It deals with all this stuff, especially with unyielding running around. This card finds tremendous value now, and it makes it super hard for those decks to get their win condition. Spirit's Refuge is going to be a two of. At some point in the game, you have a chance of playing some big spells. You will get some big cards down from uh, Heimerdinger. You can defend yourself with them, or you could also play it alongside Solitary Monk to get some cheap quick healing against aggro which is kind of one of your semi-win conditions against them. Spirit's Refuge is a two of, we have a lack of healing in this deck. You can consider running Eye of the Dragon instead of this but I think Spirit's Refuge is usually a standalone better card. Eye of the Dragon re requires a bit more support but there are lists that do have Eye of the Dragon. It's up to you and personal preference. I'm using the list that I find is more powerful against other control decks. Deny is a 2 of, 3 is a bit of a saturated card, Deny comes in small doses where it's really powerful, having 3 in a hand at any point is going to feel really bad, so 2 denies to guarantee that you draw into 1 when you need it is going to make a big difference to your performance of your game, so Deny, it always, it's always around, it's Ionia, it's a powerful card, it is what it is, this could be tweaked down to a 1 of or a 3 of depending on what the meta turns out like and as you adjust on the fly. Deep Meditation, sorry, this is one of the other new cards that we forgot to mention. It's another addition to the deck. This card's pretty much just a self-explanatory, powerful effect in any deck that runs any amount of spells, really. Uh, the ability just to play a 4-mana draw 2 spells strong enough. The fact that we can have it reduced in cost is pretty insane. 
I, I definitely recommend running this card. I don't think, I don't think this card should uh, be tweaked uh, right now. Twin Disciplines is a way for you to generate elusive units on your Heimerdinger as well as protecting it. One of the most common things you'll try and set up with a Heimerdinger list is by floating X amount of mana going into turn five. If you are, for example, able to, but it's matchup dependent, don't try and do it against aggro. Uh, commonly, you'll drop your Heimerdinger on turn five with three mana and you can protect it with din uh, twin disciplines. It's very common. Another card we'll jump across to really quickly to feature while we're talking about this subject is Flash of Brilliance. This card is insane for generating quick value from Heimerdinger. It's not so much about the six cost spell as it is about like the um, recycling of the card. Flash of Brilliance is pretty crazy. You can sometimes find some decent spells from it, but most of the time, it, the fact that it regenerates your um, spell mana is insane. It's three mana, it's an elusive unit. You play a Flash of Brilliance, on turn five alongside Heimerdinger, you refill, you maybe play Get Excited to clear a minion, or you play Twin Disciplines to protect your dude. The fact that that's a burst spell is insane. I feel like some of these cards in the game that are burst spells and shouldn't be are, but there it is there. That's one of the most cookie cutter plays you will make with Heimerdinger, and you'll be really oppressive when that happens. Anyway, we skimmed over these couple cards, so let's talk about them. Solitary Monk is a straight up 3 mana 4-3 with Elusive. There is an off chance you can sometimes return your Shadow Assassin, or if your Heimerdinger has been damaged and you're worried about it, you can also return it there. But most of the time, it's simply a, a 3 mana 4-3 with Elusive, which is quite powerful. You can sometimes just start slapping your Twin Disciplines on it and hitting them in the face to end the game. I think Solitary Monk is a standalone, very powerful card. And for the off chance, you can synergize it with Shadow Assassin is not too bad. Shadow Assassin's here, Ionia, staple card. It's just a very powerful standalone card. It's important to have cards that are simply strong when you're building a deck that don't require synergy. It makes the deck run a lot more smooth. Shadow Assassin definitely becomes a three of in most Ionia lists. Get Excited is your cheap removal. Quite powerful. The reason why we run Get Excited and maybe not something like a Gotcha because discarding cards is a bit hurtful to this deck. But the fact that it costs three mana means that we get more elusive units and that's the reason why we run this over Gotcha. So make sure you take note of that. Powerful removal, cheap disposal. I guess it has a little bit of an upside on Gotcha where it's always three mana. Music Shot becomes a two of, cheap, easy removal against aggro. Hit him in the face for damage. Mystic Shot's a really powerful standalone card that does a lot of amazing things. I think this card's just, it is what it is. We've seen Mystic Shots before, they do what they do. Cause of the Dragon, for the chance that every now and then you play a couple spells, you can tempo out the Cause of the Dragon. It's especially effective against aggro decks if you have the chance where you have your Mystic Shot going into a Thermo Beam to clear their board. Summoning out a Cause of the Dragon can sometimes save you a lot of face damage. But oftentimes, when you are versing aggro 2, don't hesitate to drop this as a 3-2 if you haven't got the right spells to combo alongside it. You'll be hurting yourself trying to go for the value in that matchup, so please be careful. And lastly, but not leastly, one of Piltover's most finest cards, the, uh, Thermogenic Beam. This is simply a powerful card. It's flexible, and it does come down to the fact that it gets uh, costed uh, gets a different cost of mana, which means every now and then we might be playing it for three mana and getting another elusive uh, tone, which is really obnoxious. I guess like this about wraps up the deck list there. I just want to say if you guys are enjoying the content so far, if you could please leave a like, maybe drop a comment, say hi. Uh, it makes a huge difference to the performance of the video and always gives me ideas of what to do next. I just want to say thank you once again. Enjoy the games here and hopefully, you know, you can learn something. Let me know if you did. I'll see you soon. Hello there. Can you learn? Vimahai is definitely taking down the next tawny. Vimadinger. By taking down, are we referring to the fact that most likely strong lineups in a tournament are going to have Vimahai and they're going to go to the top cut? So, first, let's judge the matchup that we're in. Uh, this guy's going to play stuff on curve. I think this is one of those matchups where I probably keep a thermogenic beam. I even keep two. I don't know if you ever keep two. It's like not even the worst because he's going to play Fleetwood Tracker on turn one. He's going to play like something on turn two. This is going to clear it like turn one, turn two, please. Maybe I keep the Shadow Assassin a cycle of deck. I actually won't keep Heimerdinger though. We haven't got enough statistics to really tell us um, the 
power of cards in the mulligan. That would be kind of helpful. I know Hearthstone had some pretty similar things. Like, I have all the cards. <laughs> and I've all the one drops to play right there. Sithria. Cloud Phil comes down. Ruins my day. This throws off the balance of things. I was hoping for a Fleetwood Tracker. I'm going to pass for now. So we have prior for him to make plays. He doesn't want to do nothing here. He wants to play Lucian or House Spider. If he plays House Spider, I can go ahead and use Mystic Shot and Thermo Beam, and that's going to be really powerful for bringing that closer to Dragon. Unfortunately, that is not the play I was expecting. I can still combat this with the Thermo Beam. And we can kind of lead into the same play next turn. But next turn we'll have... um. Next turn we will have 4 mana. It's going to be a bit tricky to coincide these. I might take some damage to the face. I can't like Thermo Beam first. Develops a Badger Bear. Solitary Monk's a pretty good find here. It pretty much blocks the Badger Bear, so I'll take that. Three mana 4 threes are insane. I'm happy to block this. But you should just outvalue him. In this position, he's on, sitting on 4 mana. He wants to play like, um... Grizzled Ranger. I'll just pass for now. I can always just wait for him to react. We have all, we always have the tools for reaction. I'm kind of getting sick of seeing these, um... <laughs> Nothing's lining up appropriately for me. I'm still going to go for the Thermogenic Beam here. I think that's just too good. Even if he has a tough... Ranger's Resolve, I can deal with it. Hello, Cheesy Sauce. How you going, buddy? Thanks for popping in. I know it must be really late, and I started my stream super late. I do apologize. Uh, a little bit. I think I needed to sleep in a little bit. I'm only trying to explain myself too much. Gowan. Where's the Thermo Beam, dude? I feel like I'm in a position where my Will of Ionius is not as powerful here. This saves me a bit of damage. We'll do it for now. I feel like I'm on the back foot here. But we're sustaining, which I guess is the most important thing. Okay, we're going to draw some cards. These two cards can come in clutch, actually. He's thinking about what to do here. He might be sitting on a um, Cythria. That's why he's considering his plays. He's going to play a barrier card. I can't play two spells this turn. Can I? No. I'm gonna play a 3 mana 2 2 that allows me to draw cards. And also has elusive. You might play a bannerman here. I'm feeling pretty. feeling that bannerman coming down. Illusion. I, mm, I have to be careful for the uh, senator to come down if he's actually rocking that. Now he wouldn't see on combat there because he'd kill his Lucian off. Doesn't all that armor slow you down? Slow and steady this is a pretty war. strong Ranger's Resolve turn. So I'm sitting on 8 mana. That allows me to go this combination of cards here. I think what I'd be better off doing is, first of all, probably just Mystic Shotting something. And we have to do this in tandem. What would probably be more correct. 
So most likely I'm using get excited. Yeah, most likely I'm using get excited. I know what he's trying to do here. He's trying to set up a um, pursuit. Even if he plays Ranger's Resolve, at least he cannot rally, which I think is really important. I'm using the Get Excited specifically on Lucian, in case he has a tough card. I guarantee that hopefully it goes down. I get to play my 3-2 Claws of the Dragon, which helps me combat the board a little bit as well. I can go as far as to drop Twin Disciplines into Garen this turn. I'm just not entirely sure if that's worth it. He can easily single combat with one of his other units. Now Rally's three. Rally's three mana. Rangers resolves one. You can't do both. And I wonder if he would have considered using his um Lucian a uh, single combat there. I think for example, if I was to do this and play twin disciplines and clear the Garen, I'm in a really good spot. At the same time, do I need to start considering how much value I want to hold back? Or Heimdinger? I'm just gonna try it. Nah, I'll get I'll, I'll play into his single combat too much. How was my day? Just starting, man. Oh, he plays into it. So now I'll definitely use that, right? Let's dodge the ranger's resolve and we're good. I didn't see this line coming actually. So that was completely worth it for us. Yeah, Dace is starting. I slept in a little bit. Cheesy sauce. How you going, buddy? We're diamond now, right? I think we're in a pretty insane spot. I just need to draw some something cheap. That'll do. I'll take that. This is the best value I'm gonna go for now. I've just seen him single combat. Like, we're gonna draw two spells at least. We're gonna put units onto the field. I can go as far as the Thermo Beam, but that's completely not worth. Could have also attacked here, maybe. This is worth. This is completely worth, I think. If he, um. Yeah, you wouldn't wanna block there. Yes, sir, I am. Thought so. Eat up, friend. So what's he up to here? What is he what is he trying to do? Spring does not pity winter. You act, but do not see. I don't think I'm in a position where I need to commit that much resources right now. I might drop a spirit's refuge, but that's probably not worth it. Overwhelm. Overwhelm. I'll go deep meditation. Four plus four. I won't go deep meditation. I would have loved to have buffed this to a higher. At that point. I'm worried that he has direct damage because he's in Noxus. Would this guy be running Decimate? And what can I possibly draw that makes any difference right now? Not an entire lot amount. Dimensions don't determine themselves. Okay, we're gonna do meditation. Like I wanted to find the twin disciplines there. I wanted to buff this unit, but this is the position that we're in. That's an incredible amount of damage. Yes, yes, again. We're going to play some turrets that have a 4-1 and fearsome. That's something would help. 
If I can't kill him on the open attack, then Decimate would help him a lot. He has to top deck it. Like, if he's got an empty hand, I'm like really overthinking the situation, but I was a little bit worried. Yeah, where are we sitting at? Yeah, we, I think, yeah, no, no, we got this. I think it's pretty hard for him to not dodge the double, get excited. Swing with everything, we should have a win here. Unless he's running um, lifesteal. It's kind of unlikely. So we are going to buff you. I want to buff the last unit that has 2 HP. See where that puts him at. I'll drop on the get excites now. I mean, before the attack's done. Okay. Now for stuff. Impeccable. Insane. Calculated. Surely no decimate soft man. I know. I'm thinking the worst. This is why I lose games. This is why I'm diamond four. Because I think that my opponent who's running Lucian and Garen in the Demacia and Noxus list, which is probably just running House Spider and Overwhelm, would also be running Decimate. Very unlikely. Very trolly of me to expect that. So I'm going to put some music on soon, but for now I'm just trying to get some footage for my YouTube. I think it's, going to be, it's becoming a common trend that throughout the earlier half of my stream, I will be streaming without music as I do need to get footage. And it's I'm running out of time between, between streaming, spending time with my wife and doing general house duties. I haven't got time to sit down and get raw footage off stream or the YouTube channel. So here we are. So we are, well, we are versing something interesting. Mystic Shock, get excited. These cards will probably help me throughout the early game. I'm not sure if I should be hard mulligan. I definitely keep the music shot. I'm probably going to hard mulligan for a Claws of the Dragon. So I have something, some tempo I can provide against him. Looks like I found the Get Excited again anyway. Solitary Monk is a better find than what we had. Solitary Monk will always be better value than Get Excited. And it sucks that he has the attack token. Because Rear Guard Sergeant on the opening attack is probably <laughs> game over. A lot of the times, having a rearguard opener on an uncontested can lead to some pretty um, unfortunate events. I'm gonna see what he plays here. See if I change my moves. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, so we want to get excited that for sure. That's gonna get him a lot more value. I think Vi's gotta go. It's too slow right now. We'll find more. We have three copies of it now. So we definitely deal with the uh, Twin Disciples while we can, while he has no mana to react. And then we can always use the Mystic Shot afterwards. Let's see what he plays to the field here. I can do this. Okay, Solitary Monk finds me a bit more value if I play that. I deny just as much damage by playing it. Now I don't quite deny as much damage. I need to clear this unit though. There could all be arguments, there could also very much be arguments to like take this trade. But I'm gonna take this block wall because Boom Crew is insane to deal with. This is just an unfortunate matchup where there's not an entire amount we can do. It's because we couldn't deal with the rear guard opener, that's like the biggest problem. Because right now we're sitting, we could be sitting at 12, we're sitting at 9, and that just puts us in a terrible spot. Got very awkward amounts of mana here. Very awkward amounts of mana. I don't know if I'm supposed to use deep meditation now to try and fish for life blade. Or if I just, I need it. It's hard. I know if I play deep meditation now, he gets the guaranteed it with saboteur. Can't even play two spells now. I'm just gonna have to play deep meditation, deep meditation, and fish for something. 
Yeah, a bit of a risky play. I would have loved to have had down reduced in mana. Of course I'm ready. Even if I was to drop my Thermogenic Beam, if I were to find another Deep Meditation, it would cost two mana and I would not be able to find Life Blade at that point. Holy shit. That Deep Meditation was clearly a mistake. See what I can do to stay alive here. It's it's uh, it's really unlikely I can do anything. It's uh. best I've got. Entirely impossible for him to have uh, answers here. Double single copy of Get Excited plus Music Shop would get him there. No problem at all. I think I made a mistake last turn playing Deep Meditation. I was convinced that if I found um, Life Blade, it would have made a difference on this turn. Fortunately, not. I mean, he's one. Um, Brothers Bond. Haven't seen that card for a while. Sure. You know, I thought that maybe if I played uh, th Will of Ionia, it might have made a difference. It was already well gutted. Completely steamrolled by the most incredible, impeccable deck in the game. That's always going to be a shitstorm. I don't feel too bad about losing that. I think I only feel bad that I played Deep Meditation on that turn where I should have considered my options a lot more than that. I was convinced that if I found Life Blade, though, we might have had a really good shot there. Yo, Dean Arena, how's it going, buddy? Nothing you can do there. He had guaranteed four damage next turn. You know, it's not a lot. I did what I could. I just wanted to make sure I played my turns as optimally as I can. I think our mulligan was the biggest mistake. I think what realistically cost you most of those games is a rear guard, sergeant, opener. You have no idea how much that card annoys me. Oftentimes when I'm building decks, I actually consider that a lot when um, I craft out my early game. I'm like, how do I deal with the rear guard sergeant opener? You see me oftentimes run uh, one mana two ones in my decks. Yo, we on the Aussie, we on, we on the Aussie sleep cycle, which would mean that, I have no idea what that means, but uh, it is a decent time here for me. Not as decent for you, dude. So against the Karina control, basically we want to look for Heimdinger. I'd be willing to keep it off the mulligan if I found it. And I think I'd hard cycle for it. Deep meditation cycle. You have 2.5k shards. Get ready to dance soon, friend. Yes, I look forward to it. Uh, on Friday, I do sales on it. So if you pop in on a Friday, you will have a sale on it. So you don't have to spend as much shards. Friday is out. <laughs> as I've said multiple times before. And I feel like I'm on repeat now. Friday is our Variety Friday where we do a bunch of various things. Usually resulting in expeditions. Sometimes we drop a poll and we, th we see what everyone's interested in. I think this Friday I'm going to smash out a few expeditions though because I have lots of tokens. I need to get, I need to get them done so I can earn some shards, earn some wild cards, earn some champions. I'm happy to flow mana there. If he's not going to flow mana, then I'm going to flow mana. Anything I play is just pretty much going to be removed by something. So I'm pretty much playing cards looking for cycle. So I'm going to play Shadow Assassin so I can draw some more cards from my deck.
Any tournaments going on soon, Tina Reno? Impeccable. How much do I value this Shadow Assassin? How much do I value this Shadow Assassin? I don't think I value it enough to even bother using anything on it. There was one consideration that was the fact that I had Solitary Monk in hand. And then maybe I can get some value from drawing cards. Asher Bro Redeem Posture Check. Alright buddy. What's up Asher? How you going man? I look straight enough dude. Chest up lad. It's up dude. Feeling good now. Feeling uh, very absorbed into the game. I feel like I can uh, get some... I feel really straight there. I feel a little bit too straight. Lean back a little bit. And we're just going to play deep meditation because drawing cards is important for us. And we are hunting for Heimendinger. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. 9 cards in hand. I mean, anything I play is just removed. So I'm going to pass for now. I'm going to pass because I want to float 3 mana going into turn 5. So I can do one of the most insane plays ever. The classic, the old Heimdinger turn 5 into a flash of brilliance. Followed up by a, a get excited. Really cookie cutter play. What's up? How you going? You look like the dude on deep meditation. Got, got that straight back. Hello. Oh, you're the one that redeemed the points. I'm feeling pretty straight edge now. You play as a dude. I've got a way to deal with the dude. I also don't want to spend my mana. How much value does Will of Ionia oftentimes find in this matchup when I can guarantee killing it right about now? Uh, limited resources, Demogenic Beam is actually not as valuable in this matchup. So if I ping off a Vi, for example, that he's played to the field as a 3-5, which means he's probably not sitting on another one. He would have played the one that was bigger. Unless he's baiting me, I still believe that playing Demogenic Beam is correct. Uses up all my mana though, I could consider just willing it for now, but dealing with it now, prior to later, seems okay to me. We lose that motor and we lose that um spell mana though, which really sucks. I think it's quite important that when we drop Heimerdinger, we have lots of mana to use alongside him. I think we're sitting on 10 cards. One, two, three, four, six, seven. And so if I'm ever sitting on if I'm sitting on 10 cards, I want to play something. I'm gonna get removed. I guess that's okay. I'm gonna play Solitary Monk. I may protect this monk to try and force him to use more resources. Like if he drops, let's say, for example, a Grasp of the Undying, I'll very much use a Twin Disciplines to protect it. That can allow me to push four damage most of the time. He's sitting on nine mana. He cannot double Grasp me. He opts into the um... I got an Undying deck actually, as I was browsing. We'll start off by just going for the attack here. If he plays um... I'm gonna protect it. The Solitary Monk's a little bit obnoxious for him to deal with. And he's just spending a fair bit of his resources. I'll keep it safe for now. Put him in a spot next turn where he wants to use resources. Where's Heimerdinger? One girl wrecking crew. Again, I think I'm just gonna thermo beam the Vi. Drop it for seven mana. Nothing else could have been done this turn to change that. Could have played Claws of the Dragon, that wouldn't have made any sense. It wouldn't have died with the beam. He glimpses here. Okay then. The Vyres are a little bit threatening because it has Challenger. I don't really care about the tough too much. I'm gonna swing with these dudes, I'm gonna skip. 
man. Wait, wait. We're legitimately looking for Heimendinger. There he is. Yeah, we can start to pop off now. He hasn't got mana for Ruination either. Best he can do here is Vengeance. And if he Vengeances, that sucks. That's always mana though. I'll be able to get a few dudes off before that happens. Rasp. So we're going to go Flash into Twin Disciples. I want to keep this Heimdinger safe because I don't trust myself to draw into another one. And now we can't play Withering Whale. We're going to super punish him with these elusive units. We're going to play this. I mean, he's probably sitting on like a Vile Feast. He can't clear the um, Solitary Monk here. He's going to flip his Elise. It's fine. I'm actually going to swing with everything. I want him to block into one of my three twos. Of course he could have, like this swing should always happen because he wants to keep these spiders alive at every cost he can. I could even go as far as to swing with this, honestly. This barely gets punished. This barely gets punished, although it kind of puts me in a spot where it's susceptible to Withering Whale. And as I said earlier, I want to keep it safe. But that's not even a bad option. There's different lines you can consider taking. With experience, I'm sure you can figure out what this line looks like and what your hand state looks like. Like that can allow me to push essentially him down to five. And he 100% wants to block this. It does get punished by Thermo Beam, so I won't do it. Yo, Faint, how's it going, man? Welcome, thanks for popping in. You thinking overwhelmed in an undying deck? I'm not thinking so. So he's got crawling sensation here. You dare. Yeah, every now and then I get a bit of a big IQ. He has crawling sensation or a second copy of Elise. I am I am shocked he did that line. I am extremely shocked he did that line. Like Flipping Elisa is actually mental for you, buddy. I'd be willing to drop down a little bit more HP for that. Weird spot here. Pretty sure if I allow this broad to go through, I can quite possibly end the game next turn. Mm, that's not entirely true. It's not entirely true because I can't get enough elusive units and a withering whale just bums me out anyway. I like this guy's trying to lean towards a withering whale. This is an interesting turn. Not sure what's correct here. But we are going to deny. I think denying a broad awakening is just the play. Because he, if he has Withering Whale and he plays that now, it doesn't feel as bad. I don't know. It's really weird that play. I can pass for now. I mean, it was gutsy. Him not blocking the 3 2. And going down to 6 is kind of scary. That's true. I mean, he doesn't know what cards I have in hand, though. And at any point, I can find those get excited so I can almost end the game. Wild Feast. I was pretty convinced that um, Lavonia was coming down this turn. How much does this cost? Three mana. We must all make sacrifices. I'm gonna do this first. See how he reacts. If he drops below two mana, sure, I'll kill the Elise. Doesn't seem like a bad play. He's clearly setting up a Withering Whale. I really considered not denying the Broad Awakening. I didn't plan that far ahead. I'll float three. There's always a chance I can um, progress day into deny. There's always a chance. 
Is this reduced? It's not. I could also buff these outside of doing whale range, but then it sets up into a. I can if I find deny. That does a lot for us. We could attack. It's true. I'm considering the value of. I'm considering the value of leveling up Heimerdinger though here. I'm gonna level up Heimerdinger. I think this is quite important. Even if you ruin nations. I feel like I'm I'm playing too much into Withering Whale if I just attack. He's gonna ruin it. So he's Withering Whaling here. Why value you protecting any of my units? I don't think I do value. I, I was always playing to Withering Whale or Ruination. I decided that Withering Whale was the one I wanted to play around. If he ruinates, it's not entirely the worst. He's destroying his own board. So I'll take the opportunity. Now our harmony gets leveled up. I'm pretty happy about that. And we can start playing some more dudes this turn to combat his board. I'm probably gonna lean towards. Get excited. I could also play by. Interesting turn. Dimensions don't determine themselves. I'm just going to get excited the spider so I can get a 4 to elusive unit. He's going to glimpse, he's going to grasp. Damn it. I didn't think that far ahead. I made a bit of a misplay here. Was it a misplay? Was I meant to play around grasp every time there? I don't know. Things is off the field though. I'm gonna play Shadow Assassin here. This is just gonna eat up units, so I'm gonna do that. True. Hmm. This turn may have been played unoptimally, but I played it some way. We found Heimendinger. Okay. <laughs> opponent can't even punish me, nice draw. So we're probably we're probably playing Heimdinger. Yeah, we'll deep meditation. I'm gonna play Heimdinger first. This happens no matter what, right? I don't think this ever doesn't happen. What I'm what I'm thinking about doing here is using the Spirit's Refuge though. If he swings with Lidros. This is a very awkward turn. I would love to guarantee some healing. I think I'm safe to use a mystic shot, so I'm going to do that. I'm 
Safety is a mystic shot, man. I think I'm going to shoot one of the spiders off. Dimensions don't determine themselves. Ah. I don't think I'm deep meditation this turn. I mean, I could take a chance that he swings with Leedros. The meditation and find the elusive units. I'm gonna play a zero mana two two. I want you to swing, dude. Swing into me so I can play Spirit's Refuge. I can fish for my next deny. The deny might help us. He's gonna have mana four, get excited plus Karina. I'm fishing. I'm gonna I'm gonna hate to block with the 8-7 if he trades right now. He's gonna swing with Leedros now. If he swings with Leedros right now, it's because he was 100 percent playing around Spirit's Refuge. It is also questionable. He's not swinging with Lidros. I'm going to use a Mystic Shot here. At this point, I'm pretty sure he's convinced he doesn't want to swing with Lidros, so... I think this turned out okay for us. These tough ones are pretty good too. It's smaller than a diagram. We can get back HP with Spirit Refuge. But I also like, kind of like need to kill him. Blocks an 8-7. If I force him into a spot where he uses Vengeance here... I, I, I so badly want to Spirit Refuge this turn. You have no idea how badly I want to do it. It's easily punished. Where I could guarantee a little bit more healing if I just hit one of these. If I block here... And he... Fuck. How many cards do I want to play around here? Ladies and gentlemen. Vengeance stuffs me up because on the next turn he gets to play Karina and possibly get excited. I cannot do much about that without my deny. I can play around those plays by buffing one of these units right now. I'm not going to play around Vengeance here. We'll see how bad I get punished. No, I'm I'm a five head player. No, I'm not. I'm a basic player who wants to get lots of life steal. Pretty much the game breaker right there. That was a really important turn for us. Truly remarkable. Oh. We lost the coin flip. We're on the attack token at least. I'm gonna keep a 3 mana 4 3 that can block some stuff. Spears Refuge is pretty good. Being on the attack odds makes such a huge difference going against Agro. No one's the wiser. Like he usually wants to develop on the open. Right? Right? First big mission. What a card, dude. Okay. 
kind of the worst outcome there to bump into a boom Kuroki. Plays down around our removal pretty well. I'm going to play a 4 mana 4-3. That can be played alongside Spirit's Refuge for quite a chunky heal. Oi, oh boy. Here we attack. Let's see what he does here. We're going to Mystic Shot at 2-1. That can deal 1 damage guaranteed. That'll be about it. I can also Thermo Beam, actually. So I'll do that. I'm not going to Spirit Refuge just yet. Twin Disciplines can actually allow for a lot more healing, so I'm going to do that. Plus, if he decides to invest a uh, Transfusion here, we can get the Spirit Refuge off. Going down to 9 is just what it is. Didn't see that coming. Hmm. We can always draw into another Spirit Refuge. Whew. Going down to th six doesn't feel good. So let's do this. Time to go. I need to cycle my deck a little bit here. I don't think it matters whether I attack his face now or not. I'll try once. I need this could matter though. This could matter quite a lot. But I wasn't going to be able to play around that forever. I mean, how am I supposed to play this matchup? Do I hold back mana so I can play Get Excited against this exact combo? Or do I have to try and pressure him so I can try and kill him before he kills me? I don't know. Boy, oh boy, this guy's going in deep. Now I can't beat Decimates. I didn't realize I was supposed to play... <laughs> you haven't missed a lot. Haven't missed a lot, dude. He could be sitting on a dead hand. This feels like the most decent line I can consider making. He plays Blood Transfusion. I, I could play around Blood Transfusion if I do this. Doesn't even play around Blood Transfusion. He always has priority on me. I don't think I can play around Blood Transfusion at all. It's burst speed. Doesn't matter if he has it. If he has it, it's like a GG. I can still clear this unit though. I don't I don't really know what like I'm supposed to do in this matchup. Better run. Backfired. Is that all? Oh, this hurts. I can't even like play solitary monk for value here. I'd just be better off floating my mana. Playing. Okay, let's let's say he's sitting on a hand that is like units. Pretty sure I just do this anyway. Let's make it deep. Wow. But 
now we're crumbling to the knees of every burn aggro player at the moment what is going on oh boy at least i'm on the attack token this hand looks pretty good for interacting with the board boon rookie is really good against harmonica control really good Insane place. I have my orders. So we're gonna mystic shot the rear guard. If he plays another one drop, I can thermo beam the two one. Just not to do that. Thermo beam. We essentially need him to draw super poorly for us to have a chance in this game. Okay. I'm gonna play Solitary Monk to try and combat his aggro by being aggressive myself. Sure. I'd like to, uh, would it like at least like to get one win against Burn with this list? First one's free. Going to Mystic Shot. Three two. I'm gonna play a uh, Claws of the Dragon here. I don't think I care too much for dropping it for free. It would have been nice to have been able to drop it for free. But I got a chance here to push some damage and suddenly we're the, uh, we are the aggressor. So we're drawing pretty decently. Yeah. So that's what it takes to beat Burn Aggro, some really awkward draws. Oh. I feel like I'm about to bump into another Baron Aggro deck. <laughs> Is it time to whip out this random ass list that apparently has 20 upvotes on uh, Mobilitics? The anti aggro, like, <laughs> I don't know how it's anti aggro, but it just looks like such a cool list. We've got so much going on here. Let's try it. There's a lot going on with this list. Let's do it. 